Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're we'll going to be doing a banker's algorithm tutorial, which is a deadlock avoidance algorithm, and um, it is evidently used in banks. So that's that's what I've heard. So, yeah. Anyway, in the banker's algorithm, what you will get is you will have the allocation matrix, max matrix, and the available matrix provided to you in the question paper. What you will need to find out is the need matrix. All right, so and also you have to find out if the system is in a safe state or it's not in a safe state. When it's in a safe state, what it means is that deadlock won't occur in that state. All right, so um, <clears throat> how do you find the need matrix? You, you subtract ma uh, you subtract allocation matrix from the maximum matrix. That's how you get the need matrix. So max minus allocation will give you the need, the corresponding need matrix. And the available matrix is usually given and when it's not given, what you do is you have resources given to you, right? There will be two types of questions for this banker's algorithm. First, the available matrix will be given to you and if it's given to you, then you can like, you know, solve it accordingly. And if it's not given to you, then you have the resources given to you, A, B, and C. These are the resource types. And um, when the resources are given to you, you just, you just subtract the total allocation Total allocation is the sum of A, sum of allocation of A, sum of allocation of B, and sum of allocation of C. This is the total allocation. So you subtract this from this, and then you get the available matrix. That's what if, that's what we have done here. But, and the so the banker's algorithm states that each of the processes after it's finished, you update the available matrix that's required because after you finish a process, it can release its resources, right? So then you can use those resources for other processes execution. I suggest that before watching this tutorial, you have a little bit of idea of the concept of banker's algorithm. There are lots of YouTube tutorials out there. Good job done by other people. You can see it, but those are not the simulation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you a simulation, a tracing of how to solve this mathematical problem like, like uh, when it comes to exam. But the whole concept of banker's algorithm, I think they can explain better. Anyway, so... Yeah, so uh, after like what we do is available matrix. Oh, sorry about that. So available matrix is given to you. Available is equals to work matrix. All right. So let's start with this tutorial. Then you'll understand what I'm talking about. So there are five processes P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4. So when P0 is given to you, you have to finish and execute P0 fully. Now P0 requires 7, 4, 3, but we have 3, 3, 2. So 7, 4, 3, we need it, but we have, we have available resource 3, 3, 2. So that means it's not possible to solve it. So for now, the finish flag will be false. We'll come back to this later. It will be a loop, right? So we have this loop going on. And uh, what you called after this whole thing is done, if we are again coming back and we again see that the need matrix, like we need, we need more than what's available, then it's going to be in a deadlock state. But if we, if it can be executed, if all the processes can be executed, then it's not in a deadlock state and you can get a safe sequence. All right. So let's go to P1. P1 needs one, two, two, but we have three, three, two. So yeah, need matrix is lesser. The need array is lesser than, is less than available. That means we have more things available than what we require for P1. So it can be executed and we update the work array. What is the work array? How do we update it? Work equals work plus allocation. Work is initially equals to available. So work equals work plus allocation of that process. So P1 process we're executing. We have, we finished P1. So work will be equals to 332 plus 200. So we get 532. All right, next P2. P2, we need 600 and now we have 532. This is the updated updated available array that we're going to be checking. All right. So we need 600 and we have 532. Still not enough. I mean, we have enough resource for B and C, but not for A because we need 6, we have 5. So not possible. So it will be false. P3. P3, we need 011. We have 532 possible. So work equals work plus allocation of PI. So work equals 532 plus allocation of two allocation of P3. So 211. We get 743. All right, next for P4, we we need 431, we have 743. 
So what you call, we have enough. That's that. Then we update it. So work equals 743 plus allocation of P4. So 002, so 745. All right, so this is the new available thing. Now, like I said, it will be an it will be a loop. All right. So after this whole thing is completed, we again check if P zero is P zero has enough resources available to it right now. So since we have enough resources available, we have seven four five and P zero requires seven four three. So we have enough resources available. So the flag will be true now and work equals seven five five work plus allocation. So seven four five plus allocation the allocation of P P zero. So zero one zero, so it becomes seven five five. Now P two, P two requires six zero zero. We have seven five five more than more than enough. So we again work equals work plus allocation of P two. So seven five five plus three zero two. So we get ten five seven. Now you can check your answer because after all this finishes process have finished it finished completing. We will have we will get back to our original number of resources given to us, which is ten, five, and seven. So then this we have a safety sequence for it, since we uh, we we take we compute the safe sequence. Uh, what you call looking at the true uh, the flags. The first time the flags that are true, we just take those and we put in the safe sequence. So when was it true? P one first first true. So P one. Then second was P three. Third was P four. Fourth was P0 and fifth was P2. So this is our safe sequence. So yeah, that's how you do the banker's algorithm. And when a process wants to request a resource, for example, here, uh, what you call, suppose P1 wants to request 102. Okay, so what we do, we add P1, we add this request 102 to P1's allocation, so 200 zero zero plus 102, and we subtract this 102 from available, 332 minus 102. So what do we do? First, we add this requested resource to P1's allocation, and then we subtract this requested resource from available. Add to P1's allocation and subtract to from available. So then after that, after doing that, we compute the whole thing again that we did here, this whole thing, this yellow part. We do this again, like work equals work plus allocation and see if the process is executed and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we do this again. And if we get a safe sequence, then this system is in a safe state. So it turns out after doing this, after updating this, like adding it to P1's allocation and subtracting this from the available, we get this, this whole picture. All right, we get this table. You can write it down or something. This is the exact same example that I've been doing in the here. So yeah, after updating, this is what we get. And turns out there's still a safe sequence. P1, P3, P4, P0, P2. You just have to compute the same thing again. The one, the thing I did in this yellow thing, the yellow part. And if, if you have a safe sequence, then the system is not in a deadlock state. Again, when P4 requests 330, turns out we do not have enough available resources and the system is not in a safe state. That means you will not get a safe sequence. Try working this out. We will actually not get a safe state because after even after coming and looping back, you'll see that uh, the one of the process or some of the process still does not have enough resources. For example, what I'm trying to say is like... After we computed this, we found that P0 and P2 didn't, uh, like was the flags were false, right? So we went back to the loop again and computed this again and checked that if our like if our present available resources is enough for completing P0. Turns out it was enough, but when in this case maybe one of the process it wasn't enough. Uh, the we did still did not have enough available resources. That's why the process still could not complete it. All right. So again, P0 requests 020. So from this state, from this state, we just add 020 to uh, 010 and we subtract 020 from 230. This is what we get and it's still an unsafe state. So P, P, P0's request is denied. All right. So you just find out like, you know, you just do the tracing in the yellow thing that you did. And if you still find that there's, a, there's no safe sequence, you just can't find a safe sequence, that means it's in a deadlock state. Doesn't mean that your thing is wrong. Of course it is if you're not following the steps properly. But if you follow the steps properly and when you see that even after requesting a resource, you don't get a safe sequence, it means the, sequ the 
the processes are in an unsafe state. All right, so this was all about Banker's algorithm and I hope you understood it. Like I said, if you want the conceptual part of it, I'll link a tutorial below, that's good. I don't know the person, but he or she, whoever did the video, helped me enough to understand the concept. And what I did was the mathematical part of it. So yeah, um, please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like this video, if you understood it and good luck.